been the hot topic everywhere, all around the world and globally. My talk today is going to be uh, broken down into these sections so that I can convey the message to the best of my ability to all of you. Uh, first, I'll talk about what is coronavirus, a little bit of introduction, and, uh, and I'm not going into the scientific details of it, but just a little bit understanding what it is. Then I'll talk about symptomatology, how they present, then how bad this disease is really, which is, you know, what are the complications which we all are scared of as a result uh, of what's happening globally. And most importantly, I think uh, the crux of this talk is going to be knowing how it's, it is spread. And I'll try to lay down some basic uh, mechanisms. I'm sure they will be addressed as well uh, by the other speakers in the panel down the discussion. And lastly, what treatments are available at this moment of time. Next slide, please. So what is coronavirus? Is it really a brand new virus? Actually, it's not. What it is, is we have known coronavirus for many decades now. And these are a family of viruses which cause a typical flu-like illnesses. And on an average, 20% of illnesses arise from a family of coronavirus. So most of these are benign viruses. You know, you never worried, you were never worried about these viruses. However, as you all know, the coronavirus that originated from China, Hubei province, uh, was the novel coronavirus which has been uh, catching the attention all over and causing this disease, which was named as COVID-19 by WHO, just for the sake of not assigning this to a one particular ethnicity uh, or to misnomer and label one community as the cause of this. So COVID-19 is the name of the disease caused by this novel coronavirus. I know none of you will be probably interested, but the scientific name for this virus actually is SARS-CoV-2. Next slide, please. So where did it all start? Well, pandemics are known to the mankind for centuries now. And uh, for this particular pandemic started all the way in Wuhan uh, in central China. Uh, this is a beautiful picture of the city. And uh, what exactly happened there was the theory on December 8th, sometime around that time, where first case of this coronavirus infection was identified from a, around a seafood market called Wuhan Seafood uh, Market. And the theory is it did not directly come from humans, but bats were the source of coronavirus for some time. And there was some sort of genetic mutation that eventually hopped onto human beings and then human to humans spread from there onwards. Next. So what are the most common presenting symptoms? The three most described presenting symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Now, these are the most common presenting symptoms when you have a viral or flu-like illness. So whenever you have any of these symptoms, at this particular time, you got to think about whether I have coronavirus. Now, to my own personal experience and the hearing from my colleagues who work in the hospital, what I have noticed is there are many other different variety of presentations, such as abdominal pain, such as loss of smell sensation, which you might have already heard through social media or TV. So there is a variety of presentations in addition to a typical presentation, such as fever, cough, and shortness of breath but these are the top three presenting symptoms, just like any, and most of the people have mild symptoms. Next. So the main thing is, how does this spread? And this has been a big, uh, I would say, a puzzle for all the scientists all over the world. What we know is predominantly it is spread by two different mechanisms. Number one is droplet. Now, when we say droplet, what does that mean is the act of coughing, act of sneezing on somebody will lead to release of droplets, which are bigger particles where the virus can sit. And if somebody is nearby, close proximity with who is infected can lead to infection. That is droplet. And this is thought to be the most common mechanism of spread. That is why there are these restrictions of six feet where because droplets are eventually going to fall on the ground by gravity, 
So six feet is a, enough of a distance to avoid that spread. Now, other mode of transmission is the called airborne transmission. Now, this is more dangerous. The reason for that is because this is, if the virus is sitting in the air of a, somebody who is infected and you can acquire just by breathing, means these, droplet, these viral particles do not drop on the ground, but actually stay in the environment on the air for some time. And you'll hear more about this during the presentation. If it lands up on certain areas like plastic, like uh, cardboard, like uh, some other surface, it can last uh, for some period of time and can be the reason for spread. And this is the most scary part of this infection, which leads to, uh, you know, I think such a dramatic spread across the community and has become a pandemic. So that's why you will hear a lot about uh, what, we should do to avoid the spread. As far as incubation period, it's a scientific term to say the moment the virus enters your body, the time you start showing the symptoms is called incubation period. It ranges anywhere from two days earliest to 14 days. And what it means is this is the time when you have a good chance of infecting others. And a lot of this time can be asymptomatic. So if you are walking on a street and if, you, if a person looks perfectly normal, they actually can be carrying the virus and you may not have any idea. Some of your, you know, we are today 92 people, participants I can see while uh, giving this presentation, you know, uh, may Allah, uh, you know, protect all of us, but we don't know how many of us are carriers already and spreading. And that is why social isolation, social distancing is of paramount importance in this, this kind of situation. Um, Next slide, please. So big question, what is gonna happen if I have coronavirus? Am I gonna die? Well, answer is simple, less likely. Majority of the people are gonna do well. Now, if you look at the most recent statistics I will give, I think there are more promising numbers coming from China, but 80% of the people, once they have coronavirus, they're gonna do well, they're gonna be fine. They're gonna be, you know, recover completely. So that's a big number, that is eight out of 10 people. What happens to the remaining 20%? The 20% are going to require some sort of medical care, either in the form of getting admitted to the hospital or going to the extent that they're in the intensive care unit. And death as a result of being in this situation is very high, anywhere from 50% to 90%. So that's why this is very scary in that sense, because if you compare this, to an influenza-like illness, which is a mortality that is 0.02%, or, you know, which is, that means this virus is at least 10 to 20 times more dangerous in terms of causing death. And that's why there has been so much of problem with this kind of virus. Uh, next, who are the people who are at highest risk? In one sentence, we all are, we all are at risk. And in one or the other way, if I'm infected, if I'm young or healthy, it doesn't mean that we, I'm fine. I have a good chance of infecting somebody else who is very high risk of uh, getting infection, like elderly, like people with pre-existing medical conditions, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attack, you know, kidney disease. So we have to be very careful and you will hear more about this in my uh, other panelists when they're talking about presentation. Next slide. So what is the treatment? In summary, there is absolutely no treatment available for this infection. It's a viral infection. 80% of them recover by themselves. Whatever treatment we have is a very supportive treatment. Okay, so it is really important to understand that. And I will address one of the other things that has come up in social media and Twitter. Um, but uh, what is the best known strategy to control this disease? The best known strategy is absolutely the prevention. That's the most important thing to remember. Okay. So if you want to take one word out of this whole presentation, it is prevention. There is no treatment available. Number one, what about vaccine? There is no vaccine available yet. The earliest time we can get a vaccine that is realistically, I would say we are at least six to six months to 12 months away from despite aggressive measures that everyone is taking care of. Next slide. I put this very busy slide just to show you. This is a slide. All the red bars is the incidence of infection in Wuhan, China. You can see 
the four divisions, which is December 8th to January 11th, where the first infection was started. The second quadrant depicts where the red bars are starting to build up, where the spring festival started in China. The third quadrant is where there was this highest number of cases during that time where they started to doing the current time. And I think right now in the United States, we are at this stage of, of, of spread, which is highest peak. We are reaching a peak. We don't know what is our actual peak. We are trying to figure out. Quarantine is going on. And the last quadrant, that is February 2nd to 2020, where Chinese showed how a strict isolation and quarantine changed the whole ball game and controlled this disease to the best that is known today. So just this is a picture to show that graph where various measures and various periods in time in Wuhan, China change. And hopefully, inshallah, we will soon overcome this curve and go to the downfall of this curve, hopefully. Next, this is my last slide. I think I'm going to end after this. I'm taking already two minutes extra time. I apologize for that. I think Brother Tanvir is going to twist my arm literally. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy that I'm doing this uh, online rather than being physically next to him. So. Uh, what I wanted to address is after President Trump tweeted about hydroxychloroquine is a game changer, the whole world was talking about role of hydroxychloroquine. And the scientific evidence tells us that, yes, it can be helpful, but we don't know for sure whether it is going to be a game changer. So hydroxychloroquine may be helpful for people who are actually have symptoms of have infection, but it is really not a wonder drug as it has been portrayed in the media or by the most responsible authorities in the governing bodies. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation. I hope um, I have uh, put my presentation in a clear, concise manner.